Ray here, welcome to the channel. I like to explore power options when the power goes out. So today we are discussing four of the most common ways to connect a generator to your home. We'll talk about the pros and cons of each option, what might be best for your scenario. So we'll also discuss this manual transfer switch. This is more of the less common option, but this not only will keep your lights on when the power goes out, but I'll show you how I can use this option to save me money on my power bill as well. So if you wanna have some fun, come along. If you are interested in any of these products that I show in this video, I will have links in the description as well as any discount codes that I can get. So that will help support the channel as well. Okay, so the first option and probably the most limiting is your traditional transfer switch that has a critical load sub panel attached to it. This is something an electrician will come to your house and install. So he would move all your critical circuits on your main electrical panel to your critical loads sub panel. And then the electrician will run like an inlet box outside where you can start your generator. If the power goes out, plug your generator into the inlet box, and then you can flip the switches from grid over to the generator one at a time. So one thing good about this option is when the power goes on, all the rest of your lights will go on and you'll know right away. When the power goes on, you can turn your generator off and switch all those switches back to grid power. So the only problem with this is you can't add very many circuits to this critical load sub panel. You really kind of need to determine beforehand which circuits are critical. And if your mother-in-law moves in and she needs a CPAP machine, you're gonna need to get things rewired but it is fairly inexpensive and it's easy to use. And if you have a small house, you only need a few circuits, this one could be good for you. Now the next option, which I think is one step up, is the uh, interlock kit. This is much easier to install than the critical sub panel. You don't have to move any circuits around and it's capable of running your entire house, depending on the size of generator that you have. Now how this works is you can get the same generator inlet plug wired in, and you basically will wire it in to this port. So usually the you know, power goes out from these circuits, but this one is a little bit different because the power will actually come in from a generator. So your power will be fed in here. So when you go to the store and buy an interlock kit, really you're just buying this safety device. Now this will ensure that you don't have your grid power on and your generator power on at the same time. Now, if I didn't have this on here and I had uh, you know, my grid on, and the power went out and I turned on my generator power and I just started feeding my, all of my house, that would work just fine. However, it would also be sending power and charging the power lines into where those utility workers are working and that's gonna be dangerous for them. So if I wanted to turn on my generator power, I literally can't because this fin is in the way. So basically I would need to flip my main power off and that'll allow this to go to slide up and then I can turn my power on for my generator. Now, if power goes on, I can flip this off, slide this down, and then it will allow me to turn back on my grid power. So I do love my mother-in-law, but if she does move over into my house and the power goes out, she's gonna go out to the generator backup that I have, and she's gonna have a little bit of a hard time switching over to the generator because that switch can be a little bit confusing. Now, one other downside of the interlock kit is you're feeding your breaker panel from one of the breakers. Now, if you've got a really old breaker panel, that might not be an option for you. So just check with your electrician, make sure you can do that. So right now, this is a 200 amp breaker panel designed to take 200 amps in from the side. Now, I, now for me, I have limited the power to 60 amps. So it's, it is a whole home backup, but it is limiting my whole electrical panel to only 60 amps instead of the traditional 200. But 60 amps is definitely a ton of power to go around in case of an emergency. Now, if you just have a small generator, you can connect really small generators to these inlet plugs and you can turn everything off and maybe only turn your fridge on or your furnace and uh, be just fine. You can switch around which circuits you think are important and turn everything off if you just have a small generator. Okay, so the third option is a automatic transfer switch. There's a lot of different options online. So the type that I'm referring to is the type that will sense that the power is out and maybe five seconds later, it'll automatically start up a generator for you and all your lights will just go back on. You 
don't need to do any special switching. These can be very large generators that run on dual fuel, natural gas or propane usually. But gotta admit, this is a pretty nice option. However, you're gonna wanna make sure that you have gas available or propane. If the power's off due to an earthquake, you may not have natural gas available for you. That is definitely one of the downsides. And if you're living in a cabin and you're just on propane, you're just on propane if the power goes out for three days, you're gonna switch over to propane and you're gonna be using a lot of the propane that you have bought and shipped up to your property. This option here will run me about $6,000 and it could cost me that much to install depending on how much it costs to run my gas lines and electrical. So that option can get pretty pricey, especially if you're not gonna use it. Now for an ideal system, for me, would be one that would save me money in my power bill, but also keep my lights on in case the power goes out. Okay, that leads to the next option. Now before I show you how this will pay for itself over time, let me show you what it actually does. So basically in a nutshell, this box will determine where my home electrical panel will receive its power from. So instead of like with this system, I can have generator power come through here or grid power come through the top. Using this box, both generator and grid power will be fed through the top here. So in my scenario, my power is being supplied from the top here. So I'm gonna disconnect all the power from the top, reroute it, through this box, down here, and then it'll come into my electrical panel. As long as this is in the up position, I'll be on grid power for my entire house. And then I can connect my generator power here, so I can move this down to connect to generator power. So my center lugs are connected to my main electrical panel, and then going up or down will determine where my power comes from. So up for grid, and then down for generator. So you can have the generator at the top if you want to wire it that way, but I think I'm just gonna keep it like this. Now power from your house will always be running through this, so you definitely don't wanna go cheap on this. On Amazon, there are some really cheap knockoffs. I would definitely get a name brand option. This one is a Eaton, and this one is rated for 100 amps because I have a 100 amp service feeding my house. So when I install this on my house, I'm just gonna be running it in grid mode. So it's not gonna really save me money on my electric bill. If I wanna save money on my electric bill, I'm gonna be running it in generator mode. So this is gonna be running specifically in solar generator mode, which is this system right here. So the output of this solar generator is gonna go right into the input here. I'm obviously gonna connect solar panels to this, a battery to this. Now this also allows for grid to be connected. So if solar's not available and my batteries are dead, it'll automatically do a grid bypass. It has an automatic transfer switch and it'll send the grid power as the output here. So this all-in-one solar power system and a wall mount battery here would run you just over $6,000. Solar can actually be pretty inexpensive, especially if you go with used solar panels. I'll include some affordable solar options below. So it is a little bit more money, but at least it will pay for itself over time, unlike the automatic transfer switch with the gas generator. And this unit, you can actually connect a generator to this if you wanna be fully off-grid, and it'll automatically start up the generator. And that could save you some money on your propane bill because when your battery gets low, your generator will kick on, it'll top your batteries off, and then the generator will cut out, and you can just run your house on the battery power. If the battery gets low again, your generator can kick on. And you won't always have the generator running 24-7. So there's a lot, gonna be a lot more details on installing this in a future video, as well as installing this system. So my house is always gonna be running on solar generator mode. Now, if for some reason this system fails, I don't want my house to be out of power. So that's why I have this switch here. I can easily bypass this whole system and go back to grid while I fix this system or replace it. Now this has a 10 year warranty. I don't see that happening, but it could. So I did install this system in my house earlier with these smaller solar generators. Those have been great. And I do have a playlist on installing this. But I will be removing this system and adding this in its place. 
I will be connecting this to my main house electrical panel in my next video. And in the video after that, I'm gonna be installing this system. Let me know if I've missed any other options for connecting a generator to your home. I personally like the option that will pay for itself, which is this option, solar generator. So let me know what you think of these different generator options. Did I miss something? Is this a good option? But thanks a lot for watching guys. We will talk to you later. Bye.